That's right. I kept wanting to sit there and just listen. I wanted to drink it in. I've come to the fountain tonight to just drink, to just drink from the presence of God. Yes, Lord. I love hugs. I, I love to shake hands. I love to see 
people. I'm an old cook from the Depression that, uh, you know, way back there in the 30s, mm -hmm. and my mama cooked and paid everybody come by, and I picked that up from her. So, <laughs> yeah. so I still got that. That's in me. Yeah. So I just appreciate every one of you, That's and I pray God meet every need and every penny. Yes, Lord. That you have to spend Amen. to come. I pray God will multiply it back Amen, to you. Lord. Surprisingly. Amen. Surprisingly. Amen. That you're not going to spend anything but what God don't give it back. Yes. Because the kingdom of God you cannot buy. Sure. So you've had to buy gas and stuff to get here. But I'm believing that God will literally yes. fulfill his word. Yes. And he's done it for me. Amen. 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 If I start back, let me tell you when I'm going to push. So I just, I guess, need to give it to you. Okay. And, All right. And we will take up an offering at some time, but God's already met your needs. Amen. I want to tell you that God's already met. Thank the Lord. You hear what I said? Say, God met my need. God met my need. God's already met it. Amen. So, whatever. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And uh, been there since uh, 78 uh, and um, have a little group there. We meet on Sundays and uh, they're little, but they're mighty <laughs> in the Lord. We do a Facebook broadcast on Sunday mornings, 1030 Central Time at the House of the Lord on Facebook. And on YouTube later, we upload our Sunday services on YouTube at the house of the Lord. And uh, been ministering Kingdom Word for a long time now. And I uh, wouldn't want to be ministering to anything else. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's life to me. I don't know about you, but uh, uh, I think that uh, what God has so graciously revealed to us in his word is what the world's looking for. And what's within us is going to bring the whole world unto Christ. Uh, who would have thought that a little babe born outside of an inn 2,000 years ago uh, with a few wise men around, uh, who would have thought that that little babe would have turned the whole world upside down? Hallelujah. And until now, everyone knows the name of Jesus. Amen. And uh, so who's to say what God's going to do through such a little people? And uh, we don't have to be uh, millions of people to do what God wants to do. He showed us that, right, when... Uh, when uh, he uh, started whittling down uh, those that were under the command of Joshua, told Joshua, there's too many people here. We got to get smaller. I mean, Gideon, what, Gideon? And uh, he told them that, uh, you know, we got we to 
get it uh, down to a lower, and I think they come up to about 300. And uh, that's who God used. So uh, something's going to happen this weekend. There's, that's a guarantee in God. It's going to change our world. And it's God's business, what he does outside of our world. Amen? Amen. That's all God's stuff. That's what God does. So if we're going to see this word go from the East Coast all the way out to the West Coast, all the way down into South America and all the way up into the Northern Canada, I say amen to it. Hallelujah. Because I know that God can do those things. But I do know I heard from God when God said uh, uh, to uh, call Sister Lottie and be able to see. How many years ago has it been, Lottie, since I was here? I can't even remember. I'd say at least probably 10, 12. Uh-huh. At least that, huh? Yeah. It's been a long time. And, uh, uh, and I just love the same spirit that's here that I felt when I was here before, the spirit of liberty and the spirit of freedom in the Lord. Hallelujah. And I know that you've grown in the Lord just like I've grown in the Lord. We never stop growing in the Lord, do we? We're always growing in the Lord, always learning the ways of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, and uh, that's what I'm glad uh, uh, for this, that God has brought us back together. And um, Sister Lottie told me I stood right there and said that there's a pillar set in this church right there. Hallelujah. And do you know I'm back again? And there's another pillar being set. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has chosen this place. God has chosen this people to do the things of God. To affect all of the surrounding areas with what happens in this place. You're set by God here. Hallelujah. That's why God's always been with you through the years. That's why you couldn't do anything else but what you've done. Because God's got a purpose in all of this. Hallelujah. So we've got some others that will be coming in throughout the weekend. And uh, uh, how many uh, know or remember Brother uh, Benny Skinner? You know Brother Benny Skinner? Uh, his son David is uh, going to be here in these meetings. David has moved to Nashville and uh, is only about 35, no, he's about 50 miles from me. And David and his wife Lisa have been driving over to our house on Sundays and, and having services with us. And David uh, is going to be here uh, tonight sometime. He'll be late. Just got in, and a brother, Jim Bartley from uh, Florida, is going to be here with him. And we're going to be glad to have them. I want to introduce to you the ones that, I, that came in with me. Um, Dennis, would you and Sheila and Jamie stand up, please? This is Dennis and Sheila and Jamie James from, Sal uh, from Marble City, Oklahoma. Let's give them a big hand for being here. Hopefully, they're all three going to minister. Hallelujah. And this over here, if you guys don't stand, mind standing up, Gary and Lydia Gatlin. And they're uh, presently. This is going to get me a little time used to saying this, but they're from Dixon, Tennessee. <laughs> they used to be in Stigler, Oklahoma. And that's so good for that God has brought them to my house. To live with me and to minister out of my house in the ministry all together in the house of the Lord. It's just such a blessing. Hallelujah. And, uh, and I've known Gary especially for uh, 45 years. And, uh, and it's been just a, a wonderful friendship we've had. And Lydia, you'll all love Lydia. She's such a sweet soul. Very anointed of the Lord. They sing and preach and play and oh gosh. All that stuff, hallelujah. And uh, this is uh, Darren and Dana Best, if you guys don't mind standing up. And they're from uh, Mooresboro, North Carolina. 
Amen. These, these are all very anointed ministries that God has formed for this very day. Hallelujah. And I want to introduce to you Russ and Sabrina Carter. If you guys will stand up, their ministry. And they're from Dixon, Tennessee, and they live in my driveway. <laughs> Y'all come and stay with me too. <laughs> Something's happening in Dixon, Brandon. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it is because look at what God has brought. Uh, I was all by myself. Lottie, after Charlotte passed, my wife Charlotte, uh, who uh, wrote the majority of these songs in this book, uh, she passed away. September of 2017, so pretty close to just exactly two, two years ago. In fact, last Saturday was her uh, graduation day. Amen. Into the greater glory. Hallelujah. And uh, uh, so um, uh, it's, it's been, uh, been pretty lonely for me there because uh, my other great friend and minister Mike Kelly he was a fantastic guitar player and pastor and minister and singer uh, he passed just before Charlotte so uh, uh, I've been up there plunking away at my guitar all by my little old self and every once in a while God to bring somebody and they join in with me and I'd be in hog heaven for a little bit hallelujah praise God Hallelujah. But now my cup runneth over because God's getting ready to do something. I know we hear that all the time. I know we're tired of hearing it, I'm sure. But it doesn't mean that we can't keep saying that because the scripture says eventually that which shall be will be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything that God says shall be, will be. Amen. And that's the guarantee of God. If I say it shall be, it will be. So things are changing in everything. And we're going to see what God does throughout these services. Now, a lot of these turn the services over to me. So um, I want to let you know right now so that we don't um, mistake what services are to me. Uh, I quit having church services a long time ago. I don't have church services. I have God encounters. This isn't just church as we have known church. This is us coming face to face with our Father. This is holy ground. Not because of you and I, but because God has already appeared in this place. Amen. And he has already set in motion what he wants to do this weekend. Yes. And woe unto the man that gets in God's way. Amen. And I'm not going to be moved by anybody to do anything unless I know that God wants to do that. So I pray that nobody gets any hurt feelings, nobody gets any ego problems or thinking that they've got to do this or they've got to do that. All I'm interested in, and I don't care who does it, is that we see Jesus Amen. high and lifted up, his train filling the temple. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him a hand. Hallelujah. It's going to be different than we've ever had before in these services because we cannot afford to fall back into a religiosity. We're spiritual people. We serve a God who is a spirit. Hallelujah. And, and we must be in the spirit for us to be able to fellowship with him that is a spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so I urge us all throughout these meetings, loosen in your own being rivers of living water up out of your belly. 
That's what the scripture said. Up out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Don't leave it up to something up here to get things flowing. Let it come from here. Hallelujah. Catch the ministry up into the spirit yourselves. Hallelujah. Sometimes the first night can be a little uh, uh, difficult because everybody's getting their bearings. Some of us have been traveling. Some of us have, don't know each other. We just met. And, and that's why this is a critical service because we need to just let God speak to us as God wants to speak to us. Hallelujah. And, and I'm, I am not going to settle in God for something less than that hundredfold of spirit. Hallelujah. And so let's bind our hearts together tonight and just believe God that he is going to have his voice out of each and every one of these men and women that get up and say or do anything in his name that the voice of the resurrection will be in our midst. Hallelujah. Glory to his holy name. Now understand this. I've been around for a while now, not as long as Sister Lottie, <laughs> but I've been around some. And I know that right now God is making a way for some people to come here. And I know that God is stopping others from coming. This is different. This is kingdom business. Kingdom business. It's not church. Kingdom business business. Now, why would God stop somebody from coming here? Because God has an apothecary. You make up that apothecary of many different elements that God has brought together. And in order for it to be holy unto the Lord, every part's got to be ordained and chosen by the Lord to be here. That's how important you are. God's going to keep someone coming and he made a way for you to come. Because something's got to be joined together in these services that's going to form something beyond just church. Something beyond this building. Something that goes beyond this physical location. Hallelujah. A voice, a spirit of the Lord that's going to flow out from this place unto all the nations. Hallelujah. Are, are we streaming on uh, Facebook right now or not? Hello, Facebook, everybody. <laughs> uh, we have like an electronic church, Lottie. <laughs> They all join us every time we broadcast. We have a, a, a group of people all over the world that join together with us, and they're, they're going to be here with us throughout these whole services. People that weren't able to come are going to be able to share in this, in this meeting with us live Amen. right now. Amen. As it happens, it happens in them. Hallelujah. And they aren't just people just tuning into something. These that I'm talking about, and you know who you are on this broadcast that's joining us on Facebook, they minister into these services. I mean to tell you, and right now I'm going to tell the folks on Facebook, as you know, I always say this, if you have a need, get on the comment section and put your prayer requests on the, on the uh, comment section. And we have people that are tuning into this broadcast that are going to speak a word into your situation. Hallelujah. Now, they don't have a microphone on their ear like I do. They're not standing in a pulpit like I am right now. But they're just as powerful in God as anybody. Hallelujah. And your need is going to be met according to the will and purpose of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So be sure to do that. Reach out and let us know your need. And, and we as a body of Christ are going to form an, a, 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 an answer to that 
And we're going to be ministering a word in this service tonight that has going to be an anointed word that's going to be able to destroy the yoke where you're at. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So stick with us in this broadcast. Praise the Lord. But I, 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 I believe there's going to be out of this weekend a vast thing done by God. And what we're hearing right now, people are hearing all over the world. The same word, the same purpose that God's speaking into our hearts is being heard by people in every nation. Glory to God. My dear brother here was telling me how he's been overseas, amen, into the different uh, nations. And that's what God is doing in the word. This word is not bound physically. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are truth. Scripture says that, that the sound of it has gone into all of the earth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So what God does here in Hampstead, North Carolina, he is going to do it all over the world. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, come on, musicians, and let's just worship the Lord as God directs. I'm feeling that um, people are going to come in. People are going to come into this place with great needs. I know Sister Lottie's looking for a miracle. Amen. And there's others, I'm sure, that need a miracle. And thank God that God is still performing miracles. Can you say amen? amen. You know, you can go as deep into God as you want. Hallelujah. But God is still blessing his people. He's still going to do something supernatural because he is a supernatural God. Hallelujah. So let's just believe the Lord that he's going to do these great and mighty things in our midst. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Translate us 
us into thy image and likeness, O Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I bow down before you, Lord. I give you glory. your feet and learn almighty God almighty God hallelujah Lord I destroy the yoke from off thy neck opened up your prison door the glory of this latter house my creation is restored I have loosed all the pains of death hold you forth to liberty Thank you, Lord. Called you forth in victory. Oh, I have swallowed up the old, and Zion shall behold me as I am. Oh, come on, let's praise him tonight. Hallelujah. I destroyed the yoke from all. Thy neck opened up the prison doors, and through the glory of this latter house, oh, my creation is restored, and I have loosed all the pain. Oh, I have swallowed up 
the old Zion shall behold me as I am. Hallelujah, 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 Lord. Oh, swallow us up in you, almighty God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Strengthen your people, Lord. Strengthen your people. Heal our bodies, Almighty God. We speak a word of healing into your people, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hey, 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 hey,
Hallelujah. See if she's standing too close to your amp with that mic, maybe. Hallelujah. How many believe that? Yes. I do. There's a river of life flowing out from me. Hallelujah. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Yes. Glory. Hallelujah. This is the first night for everything, and we're getting our sound system uh, squared away also. So don't let that bother you any. That's right. We've got earplugs in the back. <laughs> got mine. Uh, well, what have you all got to sing? What do you want to sing? Come up with something, honey. <laughs> Come on, Lord. Come on, Lord. Where are you at? What key? I think. You go ahead. with uh, Sister Lottie before service and uh, there's something you said about uh, she's 87 years old and she's going like a house of fire or like they say in Oklahoma house of fire fire <laughs> and uh, she said you know uh, you have to keep your thoughts on positive things. And what was that that you said about laughing and being joyful? And that's the key to long life. That's right. Yes. Is to keep yourself, well, the Bible says, to stay your mind upon the Lord. Keep your mind stayed upon the Lord. Can you say amen? Now this song says that God is going to start taking away our thoughts of death. That's right. And give us pure life. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. 
And I, I want that. Because our mind runs away like a locomotive on us. Before you know it, we're thinking of everything that's against us and nothing that's for us. And this is the time for us to be able to stay our mind upon the Lord. Yes, Come on. hallelujah. Come on. Come on. And that's yes. going to give us life, healing yes. wings. Yes. Amen. Give us your flight. <laughs> Come on. Yes. Come on. I got that song for a dear lady friend of mine. Her and her husband have been dear friends to Charlotte and I, and she needed a healing. And the Lord gave me that, that song for her like that. And I got up and I started singing to her and she got healed. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. Healing Hallelujah. wings. Healing wings. You got to get up out of the earth. Yes. Amen. We've got to ascend, folks. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. We can't tell God come down here. <laughs> he wants us to come up to him. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to rise. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. This is mountain people that we are. We go to the heights. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. And we go up to the heights of God. And that's where the, the Lord dwells is in the high places. Yes, hallelujah. That's where all our needs are met. Let's sing it again with the understanding. Healing wind. Bless your fly. I see perfection. Yes, Lord. I see perfection. Now, perfection, the way I see it, may not be the way you interpret the word perfection. A lot of people got different ideas what perfection is. They think perfection means there's no flaw or that you'll never do anything wrong or that you're, <laughs> you're all together, you know, everything's in its right place and you have no need of anything. But you know, Job was perfect in his generation. Yes, he was. That's right. And he still died. But I see you perfect in this way that when we come together, 
we form a whole complete new man in Christ. Amen. 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 You make up my lack. Amen. <laughs> Did you know that? That's good. Have you ever thought of it that way? Yeah. Right. Amen. You make up my lack and I make up your lack in the ways that I'm, I'm strong in. Mm -hmm. And when we come together, not just bodies in a building, but when we come together in the spirit of the Lord, uh, into the presence of the Lord, yes. we are a perfect whole new man. That's right. A mm -hmm. corporate man that makes up all of its lack amongst the many members of that body. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So I see this in the spirit here tonight. I see you complete in, in the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I see you healed. I see you healed. Glory to God. I see it. I see it. In the spirit, I see it. And I'm not being, uh, uh, you know, uh, flippant about that. I'm not trying to be smart or witty when I say that. What I'm saying is my spirit sees this in God. In God. You're so much different in God than you see yourself. What you see yourself as is so far off from what God sees us as. Hallelujah. Amen. My Lord, we, 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 we uh, allow ourselves to be deceived and, 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 we, and we look through a cloudy glass and try to make up with our imagination those missing parts. We see men as trees. And, and we start making up imaginations of that sort. But when you see through the Spirit of the Lord, when you get caught up into God, there is no lack. Hallelujah. There is nothing out of place. Glory to God. That God has everything contained within himself. Woo! There is nothing radical out here moving by its own volition. God is in control of it all. Hallelujah. Oh, and uh, for that I praise him tonight. All we see is needs. All we see is em uh, half-empty glasses. All we see is everybody in such bad shape and all of this and that. But God sees it as all well. <laughs> Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says it's all well. All is well. Dennis, all is well. Hallelujah, Jamie. Amen. We don't have to wait until we glow in the dark to make that declaration. <laughs> Isn't that good? We don't have to be walking on water and not say anything until then. We can declare it as God sees it. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And you are beautiful in the eyes of the Lord. Hallelujah, Baha'iyah. You're complete in him. All your parts are there. And God knows where every one of those parts go. As, he, as, as we have heard so many times in the Aramaic when the thief said to Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The Aramaic says, put all my members back together again. When you come into your kingdom, put all my members, rearrange me. Rearrange me. 
You know, you have everything you're ever going to get from God. <laughs> Amen. How could he give you anything more than himself? <laughs> and uh, so uh, everything's there. This whole process that we're involved in, in this very day, is a reconstitution of our being, putting things in order inside of us, spirit, soul, body, and everything in between all of that, that make us up as who we are. God is rearranging us, reconstituting us, bringing us into a wholeness. Hallelujah. But there's nothing to be added to that. There's nothing that can be added to what God has already done for us. Hallelujah. It's that we have got to come into agreement. Agreement with God. But, Lord, it doesn't look like I thought it would look. Agree with the Lord. <laughs> Agree with the Lord. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be found the adversary of God. Agree with the Lord when he says that you're blessed above all other people. Hallelujah. Agree with the Lord, Dar Darren. Amen. Hallelujah, so that we're not walking in dispute, but we're walking in agreement. We're going to turn Gary loose tonight, Gary Gatlin. Did he just give me a look? Okay, good, good. That's what I was hoping he'd do. Not too quick and not too slow tonight. You hang in here with me, all right? We're just going to stay in the flow. Stay in the flow. No agenda. I don't have an agenda tonight, do you? God's agenda is my agenda. Hallelujah. And sometimes I just got to wait and see what he's doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, who can hold me back? Who can keep me from the peace?
true words were never spoken. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Brother uh, Gary is going to take it from here. Are you all going to sing something? Are you just going to minister or what are you going to do? Uh, like I said, I've known Gary for a long time. Uh, he is one of the greatest ministers I've ever heard. Um, he's as honest as the day is long. I trust him with my life. I can say the same thing about Dennis James. We have bound our hearts together, us three ministries, to do something for the body of Christ, to join the sons of God together to make connections. We're here for you, Lottie, and your people. We're here to strengthen you, dear sister. We're here to help you in any way we can. We haven't come with any other agenda, but just to be here to bless you and the people here. And God has sent us here with a willing heart, rejoicing in our heart that he asked us to come here. Hallelujah. So I pray that, uh, that the Lord will do something for you and for your people here. Hallelujah. I'm with you. I have joined myself to you. I don't say that lightly. I am joined to you. I admire you in the Lord and your walk in the Lord your steadfastness. I like the way you talk. I like the things you say. I like how genuine you are. And that's all I'm looking for. I am in search of a ministry like you that I can join myself to and say, um, uh, anytime you need me, I'm there. Okay? Amen. Amen. That's right. Let's welcome him, uh, Brother Gary Gatlin from Dixon, Tennessee. Yeah. Is it on? Yeah. You can drop it in your pocket. Okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. Aren't you glad for Jesus? Yeah. Three of you. I said, aren't you glad for Jesus? Yeah. There you are. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. What a, what a time we're living in. Amen. I uh, hope I don't get too loud and run you out of here. Amen. <clears throat> you know, it's just, it, it's such a privilege to be here. We've been looking forward to this meeting for quite some time and know that this is ordained of God. And I know that the Lord is doing something really powerful. And uh, I, I was thinking as the service was progressing, I was thinking of the scripture when Jesus told the people, the religious world of that day, he said, you can look at the clouds and you can discern the weather. You, you can look and see, well, it's going to be this kind of weather or it's going to be that kind of weather and the clouds are doing this and that and so forth and so on. He said, but yet you can't discern what God's doing. And I thought how that we're in a time right now when the religious community can't discern, and, and God has always hid His handiwork from just the natural observance. And I was thinking of how that, what we're beginning to feel, and it's not, please understand, it's not everywhere. And Bob has already started this meeting uh, tonight by stating that there are those that you're here, and there are those that are coming that God's ordained to be here. And by the same token, there are those that no doubt wanted to come, and for whatever reason, God has stopped that Amen. individual. And I say that for this reason. God's getting ready to do something. Amen. My mind goes to the Scripture, and everybody here knows the Scripture in Luke 2. I believe it is. It was time for all the world to be taxed. And I've never seen a priestly order more taxed than what they are. And it makes me to know, Brother David, it makes me to know that God's fixing to do something really big. 
every time I, my mind began to go back, not just through the scriptures, but through, through history itself, how that every time God got ready to move, every time there got, got ready to be an earth-shattering, human history-changing event, there was always a handful of people that God had selected in Himself from the foundation of the world, and He began to put a sound in the heavens that only they could hear. Has anybody here tried to explain yourself to somebody that did not have a clue what you're talking about? It's like you're talking a foreign language to them, and you probably are. What's taken place is that God has put a hunger. And, and you know, the thing that so amazed me was this. Every time God, God got ready to do something, and we're going, I'm going to give you a couple of examples here in just a minute. Every time God got ready to do something, the people involved had no clue what was going on other than there was a hunger in them. They didn't have a clue. I was thinking of how that Mary and Joseph were just going because they were taxed and they had to go to Bethlehem. And how that one little thing, they had no idea anything was going to happen. And yet, look at what happened. Entire human history changed forever. And while all of the world, religious and secular, was looking to king's palaces for Messiah to come, God caused that very deliverance to be born in the most unlikely place right under their noses. Like I tell people all the time, it took a heathen Roman soldier to recognize who it really was hanging on the cross. The religious community couldn't see it. What I'm seeing right now is I see God beginning to get a people and He's beginning to gather them from the four corners of the world. And it does not mean necessarily that it's in one location geographically, even though it has been historically so. God says, I'm beginning to pull people of one mind, one heart, and one accord. Every time I've watched God move in the Scriptures, there's something that, that, that is prevalent. There's one common denominator, and every time God got ready to move, there's one thing that was always the same, and it was this, that the people were all in one mind, one accord, one place. And, 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 I, and I know that God has given Bob a song, and I no doubt will be singing it in the days to come here. But I want you to know something, folks, that God says, I have wooed you and drawn you here. Amen. Some of you didn't even want to be here, and there's no doubt drag marks. My anointing just died. You got the batteries on that one? Switch it up. It's got three. It's good to go. Too much anointing, so I just cut it down a little bit. Testing one, two. Are we there? there you are. I'm back. <laughs> Too loud. Okay. But I was thinking about Az Azusa Street. Should I whisper? Okay. I was thinking about Azusa Street, and, and if you know the history of how that came about, one man's hunger drove him. That's what happened on, the, on Azusa Street the, the day of Pentecost. If you know the history of that, one man got hungry for God. And as I look around this room tonight, no doubt that a lot of us have driven a lot of miles. And why did we do it? Out of hunger. Yes. Out of hunger for a move of God. 
It wasn't that, and please understand, it wasn't that God couldn't move anywhere else. It's just that God says, I'm doing some things that doesn't make any sense to the natural man. Amen. It doesn't make any sense for us to leave a comfortable house, get in a car and drive hundreds of miles or however far you drove or flew or whatever you did to get here to, to say, well, it doesn't make any sense. But I'm, what are we doing here? Okay. All right. If I run you out, God bless you. But what I'm hearing is that that one man, William Seymour, he was hungry for God. And he heard, he heard that people were getting this thing called the Holy Ghost. And so he got hungry and he left Kansas and he went down to Charles Palms Church down in Houston, Texas. He, and he was a black man. And it was a white church that he went to. And he gets down there and he'll show you how hungry. Most of us would have done run for cover a long time ago with our feelings hurt. But I want you to show what I want to show you what God's doing. What's taking place was this. He gets down there, and because back in the early 1900s you could not mix the races or they didn't do those things back then, we find that what took place that because they were good, godly Christians, they said, here's what we're going to do. You can, we're going to open a window, and you can sit outside, outside in, in the, in the uh, weather, and you can listen to our services, and you can partake of our services, but you've got to be outside. And so they let him sit outside while the revival was going on. He was so hungry he didn't care. His feelings did not get hurt. And, and the nights that it rained, they were nice folks, and they let him move and sit out in the lobby out by the front door. And it didn't bother him because he was hungry. A lot of us, if somebody don't shake our hand, if, some, if it's too hot or too cold or too this or that, everything keeps us away. But I'm here to tell you, God has got a people that he's preserved in himself from the foundation of the world. And there's something inside of us, no matter our aches, our pains, no matter what we're dealing with in the flesh, no matter what relationships or finance or whatever, going on we've got our eyes focused on the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus and nothing will dissuade us or persuade us to go elsewhere we have our hearts set on the high place of God and nothing can turn us aside people can say you're crazy people can say it's a waste of time and money but it doesn't matter because we've tasted of the good things of God and there's nothing satisfies like a manifestation of the fullness of God He heard God was moving out in Los Angeles, so he jumps up and he takes off, catches a, 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 a train to Los Angeles or a bus, and he gets out there. And a lady out there had invited him to come preach, and so she let him preach. He got up and began to preach the first service, and she didn't like it the way he preached, so she shut him down and locked him out. Most of us have said, well, it sounds like God. Guess I'll go home. But I want you to know something. The, the, the history books tells us that he went down the street. He rented an old shoe factory, an old shoe store. Piled up a bunch of empty shoe boxes and he began to preach. People began to come from everywhere. Whites and blacks, men and women of all sizes and shapes, rich and poor. They begin to come to the place God baptized with the Holy Ghost. And from that one thing, the, 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 the Azusa Street revival broke out and went all over the entire world. Because of one man's hunger. Oh, hallelujah. Fast forward into the 1940s. All of a sudden we find that there's some people up in Canada. There's students up there going to this Bible college. And they're hungry for God. They, and please understand, when that young man, when, when, when uh, William Seymour went out to Los Angeles, he didn't know there's going to be a worldwide event that take place that shake the foundations of the world. He was just hungry for God. It, it, it reminds me of when Jesus told him in Acts, uh, the first chapter, he said, go and tarry for the promise of the Father. And the Bible said this, they were all in one place, one mind and one accord. God help us, if it had been us nowadays, there never would have been a moving of the Spirit. We might get in one room and God help us. I don't know how we stay in one room without killing each other. Because we disagree on everything under the sun. Yeah. <laughs> I lost my amens. Amen. Amen. But the truth of the matter is, they were in one place, one mind, one accord. What was that? A hunger for God. It don't matter if God raises up this one or this one or this one. I don't care as long as God raises up. I don't care who sings as long as it's the song of the Lord. I don't care who prophesies as long as it's God speaking. Amen. When we come to that place in our spirit where we're so hungry. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. <coughs> 
my brother, the hand of the Lord is upon you. And I, know you, I don't know that I know you, but I'm going to tell you something. God's brought you here. And God says to tell you your needs are going to be met before this meeting is over. There's going to be a touch in your body. And God said your heavens are open. Get ready because there's a new mantle resting upon your shoulders. I'm going to quicken a fresh new anointing in you. For you thought your best days were behind you, but God says not so. I'm about to stir up a fire in you that's going to consume you. And out of your mouth shall come resurrection life that's going to set the captives free. Get ready. The visitation's coming to your family. <clears throat> oh, hallelujah. And, 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 and I, I, I got to say this real quick. It's just in my spirit. Is it all right if I just do this stuff? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. I, I, I don't know if on Facebook it, that we, we have a precious brother that's been following us for quite some time from Korea. And the Lord just spoke to me, Brother Nathan, and God says to tell you that there's a new fresh mantle resting upon you. He's about to stir you up. And God's going to say, I'm fixing to send you to the four corners of the world. And I'm going to put a word in you. This night, your heavens are open, and I'm going to do a healing in your family. I don't understand if I see a physical healing needs to take place. God said, healing's coming to your land. Get ready, Brother Nathan. God says, I'm about to move for you supernaturally. Hallelujah. <coughs> my, my, my. Those, those, those students up in, uh, uh, up in uh, northern Canada, they, they were on some kind of a break. I don't even know what, it, kind of like a holiday break or something. I don't know what it was. But they all decided that rather than leaving, that they decided they just wanted to get together and pray and seek the Lord because they were hungry for the Lord. And as they began to come together, uh, there's something began to take place. For out of that, out of that revival was born the latter day move, the latter day rain movement that swept the whole world, such as we've never seen before. Now <clears throat> I'm going to tell you something: the, the 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 world is looking and hungry for another manifestation of the Lord, and it's not going to come through all of these magical things that's going on out here in the religious communities. It's not going to be a bunch of entertainers raised up. It's not going to be something to please your flesh. It's not going to be something that's going to uh, 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 cause your ego to swell. It's not about your ministry or your word or your music or your this or your that. In this hour, it's going to be because God is going to begin to bring together men and women that are hungry only for God. And it doesn't matter. Ego has left at the door. Oh, hallelujah. Is this all right? I'm here to tell you, get ready for a move of God. I believe, Sister Lottie, it's going to start this weekend. We're going to see the fire of God like we've never seen it before. <clears throat> the Bible, thank you, Brother Russ. The Bible says that, that, uh, uh, that, that he told Moses in the very beginning when he gave him the plan for the blueprint of the tabernacle, he told him, he said, you're going to make the furniture, and you're going to do this, you're going to do that. And he gave him all the plan, all the blueprint. And then the Bible says he gave him the fire from off the altar of God. Yeah. And he said this, don't ever let it go out. Amen. I'm trying to behave. <laughs> I tell you what, there, there's something, something afoot right now. He said, don't you ever let the fire go out. Aaron had some sons. Fire is fire, right? No. no. <laughs> the Bible said they brought strange fire right. to the altar of God. Right. We got people all over the world, preachers all over the world now bringing strange fire. Right. And they wonder why God's not moving. They wonder why they're having to resort to tricks and all kinds of con games just to survive. God says, I told you not to bring strange fire. But they're bringing strange fire. <clears throat> and all through the history of Israel, all through the history of Israel, they had a priest that kept the fire going. Every time they would move, he kept the fire going. Every time they went into captivity, they would hide the fire. Oh. They preserved the fire. We've got people that we've been hid now for a time and a season. Come on now. Oh, God, help me. This thing's snowballing. <laughs> this thing, I, I'm here to tell you, all through, I look at our ministries, and, and some of you I know, some of you I don't, and we've been trying our best. We've been trying our best 
to keep the fire going. Reminds me of the priests there as they went into Babylonian captivity. And they were there and they kept it going. You see, just any old oil can't be used to keep the fire going. It's got to be consecrated oil. God help me. Oh. Mm, 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 mm. See, see, y'all look at me. I'm just standing here, but inside I'm running all over this place. God gave them, God gave them the recipe for the holy anointing oil. Consisted of five uh, ingredients. And God says, here's the rules governing my holy anointing oil. There's only two rules. Number one, don't ever let it touch flesh. Number two, don't ever duplicate it. We got folks that try to duplicate the anointing. We got folks that wants to put it on flesh. We wonder where is the Lord God of Elijah? When all the time we don't understand, God says, I've been preserving a people. We've been hiding. We've been hiding from from all kinds of problems and the enemy and stress and torment and health problems, finance, kids. Oh my God, everything under the sun we're hiding from just trying to preserve the fire. And according to their history books, they, had, they got down to the last seven days. You see, the holy anointing all had to go through a process that required seven days of consecration. <sighs> and the high priest, he had hid that thing in captivity. And it was almost ready to go out. I look around this room at some of you and no doubt some that are watching. And we're on our last breath. We're holding on, trying to obey God and do the best we can. And we don't realize God is about to break this thing loose. Bigger, greater, stronger than anything you've ever seen. I'm not talking about a revival where we can get somebody saved so they can go out and act crazy again. I'm talking about a word of God that will penetrate you down into your innermost being. Whether you like it or not, he'll drag you out of your hell. He'll drag you out of death. He'll roll away the stone and cause you to come out. Oh, hallelujah. My God, my God. I was thinking about old Lazarus there in John the 11th chapter. As old Lazarus lay dead in the tomb there already. And Jesus told him, where have you laid the body? Can I tell you something? At this point, he was dead. There was no hope for him. He had already made his peace. He was already on the other side, if you please. Uh, but the resurrection came into the room. Can I tell you something? We only know, oh God help me. We only know about stuff. Bob got to minister a little bit Sunday morning, and it was so powerful. Uh, As he got up, he said, we've been talking uh, uh, not about the Lord, but we're ministering Him. Most people don't know the difference. I said, we, people know about Him. Come on now. History books tell you about Him. An atheist can tell you about Him. But God's got some people that minister Him. Hey! I said they minister Him. They give Him. They give the life. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Oh, hallelujah. And when we stand up and speak a word, we're not speaking a word. I really hope you believe this. I really hope you agree with me. I really hope you help me out. Honey, I don't care if you like it or not. He's getting right down in your tomb. And He's going to pull you out. Oh, hallelujah. We've been... (laughs) Dennis, we've been resting on our leeches. We've been at ease in Zion. But I'm here to tell you, he's about to change some things whether we like it or not. And the ways of the Lord are past finding out. Like I've always said, God's going to bring you where He wants you to be even if He's got to hurt your feelings to do it. Oh, hallelujah. When He called called Lazarus' name out, Lazarus, come forth. 
That resurrection, he, he wasn't waiting on Lazarus laying in there going, well, yeah, it's the Lord, oh, okay. I was really comfortable. Yeah, I, I guess I'll get up. Leave the light behind. Come on. That resurrection life hit that old body. Yes. He set up. Oh, nobody wants to help me now. Yes, they do. Uh, the Bible said he come hopping. Come on now. He was bound up. The grave clothes couldn't even hold him back. He was, oh my God. Loose him and let him go. Oh, hallelujah. I'm here to tell you folks that God's got a people. He's been preserved. We've been holding this fire and holding this holy fire and holding this. We did, you didn't get this holy fire because you know how to rub two sticks together. We didn't get this holy fire because you found a Zippo. Honey, God gave you this holy fire. It come right off of the altar of heaven. And he gave it to you. And he said, don't ever let it go out. And that high priest, he began to, uh, 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 as that thing began to break off, God says, I'm getting ready to break. I'm getting ready to break the shackles off of my people in Babylon. I'm getting ready to loose them. And in order to loose them, see, God's got an order. God's got an order. Whether you like it or not, he's got an order. And he don't care if you like his order. He's got it still. And so here's the deal. What he does, when he gets ready to loose his people, he always starts with a priest. Yeah. Mm. Thanks, brother. He said, let the husbandman be the first partaker of the fruit. Amen. So what he's doing is this. Sister Lottie, he's saying, look, you've been in hiding for a time and a season. Now I'm about to loose you. And I'm giving you some fresh oil. God's giving you fresh oil, Sister Lottie. There's a fresh anointing coming to you. I'm here to tell you God is about to loose you like you ain't never seen before. He's going to touch your body. There's coming a strength like you hadn't known in years. Uh, hallelujah. The fire of God's in the house, people. I'm telling you, the fire of God's in the house. Oh, hallelujah. And that priest, he took that fire, and suddenly he found that oil that had been hid. He didn't even know the oil was there. God knows how to hide stuff. Think you're so smart? God knows how to hide stuff. That priest found the oil. He'd been overlooking all that time. Time and a season, time and a season, time and a season. We want to hurry this thing up. God says, I got a season. Oh, hallelujah. So what does he do? He takes that oil and he begins to feed. Suddenly, as he got that fire going with that new oil, oh, God brought deliverance to all of Israel. They come out of Babylon. Oh, hallelujah. What I'm seeing God do in this hour, ladies and gentlemen, is this. I see God beginning to speak here, 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 and here. We're beginning to hear a sound that we've never heard before. I'm not talking about a new revelation. God knows there ain't new, nothing new under the sun. You ain't going to come up, I don't care what kind of Greek and Hebrew you got. You ain't going to come up with something somebody ain't already heard. But you know what's going to happen? There's going to come substance behind the word. I've said it before like this, I want you to hear me. When Jesus went in John 11 to the tomb of Lazarus, the Bible said he said, you know, the Bible first said he prayed. He said, I'm praying, not because I need to pray, but these religious folks need to hear me. <laughs> oh, don't make me mess with you right here. Don't make me mess with you right here. Some of us, oh, I ain't going to say it. So here we go. I'm praying, Lord, because they need to hear me, not because I need to. Lazarus! Come forth. Now the Bible says, that, and history tells us, he spoke in the language of Aramaic. Can I tell you something? If all I had to do was learn Aramaic to, to empty out the cemeteries, I'd have went to school a long time ago and learned it. So it wasn't in Aramaic or Hebrew or Chinese or anything else. It's not in the language. Please understand something. Lazarus was beyond the ability to hear a natural ear. Yeah. 
When we, oh God, I ought not say this first night of all things. When we pray for folks, we pray like we're trying to convince them to not be sick. Yeah, that's true. Trying, brother, trying. Doesn't work. We, we, we pray for folks. And, and our prayers are, are, have to do with, well, if I can pray a good enough prayer with the right language, you'll believe it. And I'll convince you that this is a good prayer. <laughs> and then you'll think, wow, that was a good prayer. I'm tired of being sick. Come on now. So it isn't in the language that you utter. When Jesus said, cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. It wasn't the sound that he uttered. It was the substance behind the sound. That substance which God is. For he said, I do always those things that please my Father. I only say what I hear him say. I only do what he tells me to do. I'm one with my Father. And when he spoke, there was the very sub The same substance that in Genesis 1 said, let there be. And out of that darkness and chaos came the order and the light of God. Because of the substance of God. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Okay, okay, i got to say this. Isaiah, chapter 6, I think it is. In the year, King Uzziah died. Who was King Uzziah? He was a righteous king. He was a good guy. But he reached into some place he had no business reaching. Got smoked with leprosy. Can I tell you something? We got some Uzziahs in the house. We got some old, our old thinking and our old ways that keep reaching into the holy. And God says, not so. Not so. But in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. High. Lifted up. God. And His train, His spirit, filled the temple. Oh. God help me. I got to skip ahead. He said, and I looked and I beheld the seraphims flying. With six wings they did fly. (sighs) Two wings they covered their feet. Oh God help me. I got to get on. I got to get on. I got to get on. And, and, And he said, and they were saying one to another. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. God have mercy. Oh, is this okay? And I looked and I beheld and he said, the voice from heaven said, who will go for us? And Isaiah, because of the glory he was beholding, recognized who he was and where he was. He said, I can't go for I am of unclean lips and I'm from an unclean people. Suddenly the seraphim came and swooped down and took a live coal off of the altar of God and touched his lips and his whole vocabulary changed. And he said, here am I, send me. I want you to hear this word. He said, what do I tell them? He said, I'm sending you forth, Isaiah, and here's what you're going to tell them. You're going to tell them that seeing, they see not. Hearing, They hear not, and their hearts cannot understand. And he said, until when? He said, until there be a remnant that returns. Oh, God have mercy. And in this remnant, the substance shall be in them. Folks, if we're not living in that day, I don't know where we are. We have a people that see but don't see. Hear but don't hear. Their hearts do not understand the goodness of the kingdom of God. They pervert every message, every revelation, every everything. They're looking for an easy way out. They're looking for something all the time. And God says, I'm anointing. I'm anointing a fresh new ministry with a live coal off of the altar of God. I'm changing your vocabulary. 
Hey! And you're no longer going to say, woe is me. But you're going to say, here am I. Send me. And God says, I'm going to put a word in your mouth. That'll be substance. And the substance shall be of the remnant seed that shall raise up and bring deliverance to all of my creation. Hey! Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know that we understand fully tonight. We got a tiger by the tail. Oh, hallelujah. Some of you were so hungry to get here, and some of you, God tricked you into getting here. But I promise you, our lives will never be the same. There is an anticipation, yeah. Russ. There's an anticipation in me. I, Dennis, I've never felt. God says, I'm, I'm about to do something. Oh, God. I don't want to get into this tonight. Come on now. The Lord spoke to me just a few days before we got here. And He said, my people have been preparing for the wrong feast. Uh, Come on now. We all know the feast, Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacles. And everybody wants to go to Tabernacles. Because that's the greatest feast. The Bible says so. And we don't understand. Every feast has a preparation. Re uh, okay, you want scripture for it, okay. The Bible said that there was a man, a king, that prepared a banquet, a wedding feast. And he sent forth. And there were those that had excuses why they couldn't come. They had all kinds of excuses. We won't get into them tonight. The Bible said the king was angry. And he sent forth warriors and destroyed those that refused to come. Then he told the servants, go into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. And we know how the church world perverted that. And they all began to come in. And suddenly the king looked at one and he said, why do you not have the garment? Why are you not prepared? Why are you not prepared for this feast? Cast him into outer darkness. I see people in the religious community that try to get past a feast. Why? Because each feast prepares you for that relationship with God on a level you've never known before. That's true. That's All right, real quick. Passover. Everybody knows Passover. And, and, and we talk about Passover. That, that, that's the outer court experience and on and on and on. But I don't think we have a full understanding, even as kingdom folks, what's going on there. Because according to, to the preparation of that feast... What they did, and this is what they do even today, today over when they practice uh, 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 the rituals over there in Israel. What takes place is this. They, they take leaven. They have ten pieces of leaven, and they'll hide it throughout the house. And the day before Passover is to be celebrated, they go through the house with a fine-tooth comb, every crack, every crevice. They clean and clean and clean and clean, and they collect. They, they try to hide those pieces of leaven to make a game for the children so the children can learn what it's all about. And they find the leaven, and they clean the place and get it ready so that there's no leaven. What is leaven? Type and shadow of the carnality of the sin. We got people don't want to give it up. Grace, grace, grace. Come on now. And we don't realize that, that there is an outer court experience. If that's what you're ordained to, and that's what you, all you want to settle for, God will let you stay in an outer court. But tonight, I'm not talking to outer court people. I, don't, I just don't believe that. I believe that these are people that are hungry and God's called to the highest order. And it's under, necessary we understand God says, I'm doing some things. There must be a whole clean house. I'm giving you the, I'm giving you the cliff notes here, the shortened version. <laughs> this house must be clean before I celebrate Passover. And before I'm ready to move into the next feast, which is Pentecost. Somebody call that the stepchild of the feast. 
because it, it was the least known about and the least celebrated. And, uh, but here, here's what I find interesting. Each feast is a combination and a culmination of everything before it. Pentecost is actually Pentecost and Passover combined. And one of the most beautiful passages of Scripture I've ever met or read was, I believe it's in the book of John, when the Bible said that Jesus walked into Solomon's porch. Remember the man laid there by the pool 38 years? Remember that? The Bible says, if you read that very first verse, it said, and it was a feast. What was it? It's Pentecost. What, what's so significant about that? That's the second day. What happened? The third day walked into the second day. I like that. He walked in and totally changed everything. Well, the, the, real quick, Pentecost. Pentecost had to do with a heave offering. It, you, the, the high priest would take two loaves. It, one celebrated the Gentiles, one celebrated the Jews. And he would literally wave it before the Lord. It was the very best and the first of all that was to come. And God says, if, if I have cleaned your house... You're ready to celebrate Passover. And when you're ready to celebrate Passover, I'll move you into Pentecost where you offer Him all that you are and the very best. And you cannot move into tabernacles until first you've accomplished that. We got people that they, they want to keep their house in whatever order they like it, and they want to move on. They don't want to give God their best, but they want to go on into tabernacles. Why? Because tabernacles is where we really get to know Him and, and dwell with Him. We want God to dwell with us in a messed up temple. So when the fire of God begins to burn the mess that's in the house, we wonder, what in the world's going on? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, I'll quit. No, don't. Don't quit. Don't quit. Oh, hallelujah. Is this making any sense? Folks, I have never felt a more soberness in my spirit than I have tonight. As God says, I'm getting ready to begin to move some people, my people, my priestly order, into a place we've never been before. Why, why is he doing it? Why now? Because creation is groaning. Amen. They're crying. Amen. There's no hope anywhere. We got more diseases now than we got names for them. There, our, our political system's more messed up than it's ever been. The world is a mess. And I've learned that when it's the darkest, your little light shines the brightest. Oh, Hallelujah. You mark it down. God's not trying. God's not trying to get us to be this great big bonfire so all the world see how holy we are. It don't work that way. These are just a bunch of, a bunch of hungry folks gathered out here in the eastern part of North Carolina. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, just like that, 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 that 120 some odd people that gathered in the upper room. They were the outcast. Come on now. They were in fear for their own lives even. They're hiding up there. And they don't, and get this, they're waiting for the promise of the Father, amen? They don't even know what that is. We're just gathered together. What are we waiting for? I don't know, but we're waiting. Kind of like Noah and his rain. It had never rained before. He preached a hundred and some odd years, it's going to rain. What's that? I don't know, but it's coming. And here we got it right now. This is what's taking place. Amen. We got, a, we got a people that we're trying to minister word. We don't even know what it is. We're trying to express God in a level that's never been expressed before. That's why this thing is going breast to breast and heart to heart. You ever find yourself right now, we're joined to people that we don't even really know. But suddenly, it's like we've known them forever. Sister Lottie, it's like I've known you forever. Oh, hallelujah. So it's like we've known each other forever. Why? Because this is a God thing. This is a God thing. Amen. This is not us doing our own thing. And I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, before this weekend is out, there's going to be some lives changed like you've never seen before. And, and I'm not talking so you can just be a weary pilgrim trying to make it in. But I'm talking about what God's doing. He said, I'm going to change you into that very God man. Oh, Hallelujah. I don't know if this has even made any sense tonight or not. But I tell you what, there's something in my spirit crying out like I've never seen before. I'm excited to be a part of this day. I'm excited. I, I know, I, I know, uh, uh, my precious wife and I, we just uprooted and moved to Dixon, Tennessee because we begin to feel in our spirit and our heart 
joining our hearts, Russ and Sabrina and, and, and Bob and, the, and everybody, knowing God's doing this, God's doing it. And, 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 and how many knows that when you're high in the Spirit, it makes all kinds of sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah tomorrow. Yeah. How many knows when you ain't high in the Spirit? Your old mind kicks in. Yeah. And you think, am I on drugs? <laughs> or what? Maybe you're getting off on them. Maybe that's it. <laughs> My wife and I sat and looked at each other. Are you sure we're going to be doing it? She goes, I don't know. Are you sure? I said, I don't know. <laughs> but when you get it in the heavens, you know it's God. Yeah. <laughs> and everywhere we look, what, honey, there was a sign here and sign there. And sign here. I said, look. It ain't like you don't get a sign. Here's your sign. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. You love the Lord tonight. Let's give the Lord a hand. God bless you. Come on, Bob. sound system and we're going to be all right let this word assimilate itself within you don't let it just be another message another thrill or a chill did you know that Jesus is here Just as much as if he was standing here, he's here. And what we've heard was just the word of the Lord to us. And we're going to have more word as the weekend goes along. God's counseling with us. We've been summoned here by the Spirit of the Lord. So it's a summit that God has called us to. So it's a counseling session. I'm not interested in how many goosebumps we get and all of that. We need to hear what the Lord has to say. And then eat it, chew it, swallow it, get it down into our soul. And let it start its good work in us. Hallelujah. I'm really excited and I'm really scared. <laughs> yes, sir. Amen. I'm trembling within my inner man. I'm trembling. Because we're in the midst of an awesome God. And he's speaking things that we just don't know. God's doing things. We don't know why he's doing them half the time. He's just doing them. But as I said in the very beginning, I know you're the ones that are supposed to be here. Amen. 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 I know you're the ones that God said you, you may come. <laughs> you know, usually when you have a meeting, you try to get everybody <laughs> in a fence post in the meeting, right? <laughs> we actually pray people away. <laughs> it's not the correct church building uh, program that we've got going on. But, that, but see, if we really see the reality of that is, is that nobody else can do what you do in the Lord. 
You're unique. You're one of a kind. And uh, you with someone else is really unique and really one of a kind. And when God brings the people together like he has this weekend, you have in your midst an awesome vehicle of God that God can move through. So we'll see who all makes it in this weekend. Uh, We have enough ministry here that you're going to really be blessed if God allows us to have each one be able to say a word and uh, minister. Uh, I feel like myself and and Gary and Dennis are going to be the, the main ones. But uh, we want to hear from others also. Hallelujah. As God directs. I love the fact that, uh, that Gary just gives of his heart and ministers anything that God gives him to minister. I think he ministered about five different things. And they all fit together. Did you notice that? As he went through, he went from here to here to here to here. We used to call that shotgun preaching. But now I see it as a, as a message of, of, of different things, but come together as one with a, with a theme behind it. And what I loved was the fact that there's substance. You don't know how long I have been yearning for substance. So much cotton candy. And uh, puff of wheats, whatever they call them. (laughs) And, uh, but thank God for priesthood meat. Thank God for the the wholeness of God's word being delivered to us. Amen. Amen. It's what's going to see us through all the way to the end. We're the the long distance people. We're not here for the sprint. We're here for the marathon. We're here for for the endurance of God. We've been speaking some, we've been hearing some great word, haven't we, David? Ken Dixon with uh, David with us and, and, and uh, Gary and Dennis coming by as they have and, and just been such a wealth of word that we have heard some of the key words that God's been speaking, strategic. God has a strategy and things are happening strategically, not by chance, but by a strategy from God. Amen. Purpose behind that. And God's been speaking to me about the tip of the spearhead. The tip. You know, we are, the Lord spoke this to me not too long ago, that we are the first of the first fruits of the first fruit. <laughs> The first fruits of the first fruits of the first fruit. You woke us up early. Amen. Amen. And that's what that tip of the spear is. It has to be the hardest point, right? right. The sharpest part. Because it has to pierce. It has to be the first through. <laughs> The puncture has to be, will only be as good as the tip of the spear is. Yeah, it opens the way. Amen. Opens the door. Makes the way. That's who we are. And I can't wait to hear what else God's going to be speaking to us. Uh, If you have an offering uh, for the services, be sure to give uh, as the Lord has given to you. And give with a cheerful heart into these services. Uh, and be mature. Don't expect me to hold a basket out to you. Come on. And actually shake it in front of your face. 
Can you be mature and just give your offering whenever you want to? Is there a basket or something that we're going to use for offerings at all? Okay, pretty ones too. I love it. Here's the baskets. Anytime, give unto the Lord so that all the needs of this meeting is met. Amen. Good to see uh, uh, Liz Eversol Stevens. Stand up, Liz. This is Liz. And what town are you from? Amen. Glad to have you in our midst. It's been a long time since I've seen you. And the sister here, I, I, I know you're, I know you, I just, yes. I'm Pastor Lottie's baby girl. That how, is that how I know you? <laughs> Hi, Larry. Glad to see you guys. I knew I knew you. I just didn't know how. <laughs> Hallelujah. This old 70-year-old brain sometimes it just don't want to do what it wants to do. Hallelujah. Anybody else here that didn't get a chance that came in that uh, didn't introduce themselves? Uh, Brandon, um, I want to hear uh, let Brandon introduce himself and all of his kids. Can you do that by, by memory? Or do you need a sheet of paper? You want me to come up there and take the mic and do that? <laughs> no, you can okay, say okay. right from where you're at. I'm Brandon, and that's my wife, Heather. Amen. Amen. Care Bear. I like Care Bear. And uh, David, uh, why don't you stand up and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm, I'm David Skinner uh, from, well, now from Myrna, Tennessee. Uh, we're on the, we're on the other, other flank of Nashville. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just moved up, my wife and my uh, four, four of my five kids, my oldest son already lives in the Nashville area. And uh, the Lord just put it in our heart, as Bob was mentioning, that it is strategic that we be there mm. in that geographical place. Uh, some things are not geographical. Some things are in the spirit, and there's no time and distance. Right. Some things, sometimes, are geographical. He wants you there with those people at that time for this particular reason. Right. Yes. And Amen. So we're glad to, to be here and I hope to meet everyone very much here. Amen. God bless. Amen. And uh, we're, we're so privileged. Amen. Uh, we know that we've been ordained to be here. Not yes. just here tonight, but here in this earth at this time. Because we yes. all know uh, that there's a great change taking place. Amen. Yes. And uh, we can't do anything about it. We're not smart enough to figure it out. So whoever we are is to participate. And so thank you for Amen, brother. God bless you. Hallelujah. Would you, all, would you introduce yourselves? I don't know you. Oh. Uh, we're uh, Pastors Ron and Miriam Cohen. And How do you say your last name? Cohen. Cohen, of okay. The high priesthood. Of, of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, we 
we've been in this for 40 years, so we've been with Lottie now for about three and a half years. Great. So we're, we're here and we travel uh, pretty internationally. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, you know that song, uh, No Man Can Hold Me Back, that I sang? No Man Can Keep Me From Appearing? The story was told us that uh, missionaries were in Philippines. We're off there in two months now. Uh, yeah, he's going in two months. And uh, they were having service at the little church, and some armed uh, guerrilla soldiers came in and were going to rob the people. And uh, they were being very uh, intimidating and waving the rifles around and threatening to shoot people. And um, the missionary group that uh, knew us, knew this song, that Charlotte, Charlotte had gotten that song in a service. And um, they started to sing that song. Who can hold me back? Who can keep me from appearing? No man, no man, no man. Amen. And they all started singing it louder and louder. <coughs> and as they did, the missionaries said the guerrilla soldiers put down their rifles and got on their knees oh, Lord. Thank God. and received the Lord into their heart. And just by that song being sung under the anointing Amen. of the Spirit. But uh, my heart is in uh, that because I know that it takes a lot of courage and a lot of commitment to God to do missionary work. And, uh, and God is moving all over the world. Amen? Amen? Well, God bless you. We love you. And uh, Sabrina, why don't you come up and uh, dismiss us? Ask the Lord to bless us. Tomorrow morning at 10.30, right here. I think I just like to say it without that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not thinking that maybe they'd want to hear you. Oh, okay. So just hook that around your ear there. To my chair. Good? Good, thank you. It's a wonderful honor to be here, Pastor Lottie, and see your beautiful spirit and your beautiful people here. They just have such beautiful spirits. They just make you want to hug them all. And so we just want to thank everybody for receiving us warmly. And Lord, we want to praise you for this wonderful service tonight, this beautiful start to this week -long, almost week-long meeting that we're going to be having here, Father. We ask that you just roll out your feast for us, Father, that we'd be willing to partake every morning and every evening. And we just allow you to appear, Father, and we step back and we allow you to be at the forefront of all of this and in charge of all of this, Father. We did not come here to see flesh. We came here to see the yes, Spirit, Lord. hear the Spirit, learn from you and partake from you and go yes. deeper, deeper into you to our face-to-face -face with you, Father. Amen, Lord. We love you and we bless you and we honor you with all our being. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.